Ready for this? Yeah. All right, let's go. What's up, folks? Antonio Jackson here at King Snake Jiu Jitsu. Just wanted to talk a little bit about the place and uh, give a free lesson at the end. So, if you can get through my short 30 second uh, elevator message, <laughs> then uh, I'll, I'll show you a free lesson. Um, now, first, one thing that sets this place apart from most places is that it's privates only. And the reason for that is because a lot of people, they are a little intimidated by being in a group of people um, just starting out and it, it eliminates that and it also um, for the flexibility uh, for a private lesson um, we can schedule it for any time that, that you're available um, I recommend training at least once a week uh, but at the most three times a week because at the moment I still have a day job that I, I like working at and um, that day job allows me to keep this place running. Uh, so there's no pressure for me to take whomever uh, wants to just train here. If, if you train here, then it's because I want to train with you. <laughs> that means you're special. Um, but seriously, I think everyone should learn Jiu Jitsu, at least the basics. And that's why the first uh, two privates are free. Hey, baby, go to side control. Boom! Oh, head control. Get that arm, get that arm. I don't know, one of them. Um, this is not a just a gym, this is a dojo. And the difference is, when you go to a gym, you'll usually see uh, a match, you'll see a ring, boxing ring, uh, punching bags, uh, mitts, things like that. Um, but here is strictly jujitsu with an emphasis on self-defense. And um, the reason for that is because everyone, once you learn jujitsu, everyone has like a, a different style or preferences, I should say. There's a right way, there's a wrong way, and then there's preference. Oh, overhook the arm, overhook. Yes. Try off foot. Bridge, go, go, go. go. Oh. Yes. You push down on my hips hard, I can't do that. So, we, see, it's harder. Yep. Yes. Nice. Ah, nice. Make it flip. Make it flip. <laughs> Hold on. Squeeze your knees. <laughs> Uh, kind of like uh, like sign language, right? I learned uh, ASL for about three years, but a deaf person, they they would see me and say, uh, "That's not ASL. He signed in English," and. You know what? That's that, that, that's bad. That's bad. Bad example. <laughs> it's more like uh, playing a guitar, right? 
when you play a guitar, there are some basic fundamentals you have to have, basic concepts as far as understanding the strings, building up the muscle memory, things like that. And once you learn from there, you can go into rock and roll, blues, jazz, things like that. So for me, I've gotten past that concept part. I understand the concept of jiu-jitsu. Now, as far as my style, uh, to do an analogy, I would say my style is more like, uh, <laughs> it, it's a mixture of the, the new and the classical. Like, um, I, I, I think it's called neoclassical. It, it's kind of hard to describe. Uh, what a guy, he has an electrical guitar, but you know, he's still playing with like this orchestra. It, it's kind of like the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. But anyway, uh, that would be my analogy for jujitsu because I, I like the new stuff and the old stuff, and I believe that both of them should be taught together, um, which is the, the self-defense, the basic fundamentals, and then the new stuff. Let's talk about the lesson. Um, so you're all aware of the slap heard around the world, uh, the assault at the Academy Awards is what I call it. But basically, um, you know, the long and short of it is uh, one guy made a, a joke and the guy walked up to him, somebody who was, everyone thought was a friend, uh, walked up to him, slapped him and walked away. It was, upsetting on, on many levels uh, from uh, a cultural sense and just from in society in general. That's just not things that you do. But um, like I said before, it, if he knew just a little bit of jujitsu, he could have avoided that. So that's the first lesson that we're going to talk about here. Um, it's literally uh, one of the first lessons I teach in the private. So um, I figure I could go ahead and just share it with you all and uh, you have an idea of uh, my style and uh, the effectiveness of the art. All right, so let's do it. Okay, so I don't know if you've ever seen um, Animal Planet, Discovery Channel, um, things like that, but usually if you watch like lions and wolves when they hunt, they're, they're looking at a herd and they're looking for one of the weaker ones to chase down. And it's gonna be the same thing with human predators. They generally are looking for the one who's gonna put up the least resistance. Um, so it's always important to have a good base. And when I say base, I mean how you stand. Generally a good base is gonna be where your feet are right below, right under your shoulders, and your knees are a little then you have a you know little bend in your knees so you can move around. You're not completely stiff. Um, one way to tell if you have a pretty good base is if you can go all the way down and come all the way up, or you can jump if you need to. I'm not gonna do that. You gotta protect the joints. Um, so the first thing is have a good base, good posture. You're wherever you are. You have a right to be there. Nothing to be afraid of. Um, so don't don't be standing like this or like this, or looking at your phone, doing all that kind of stuff. You know, have a good posture, good base, and situational awareness. It's okay to look around and see who's in your close area. Just, you know, just checking out the scene. Not being intimidating, threatening, not being inviting, anything like that. So there are a lot of times when people make eye contact, they think it's an invitation. Other people can think it's an invitation to a conversation. 
And usually that's not always the case. So it's okay to look around and you know keep your solid base while you're waiting in line or, or doing whatever, chilling out, right? Um, the other thing is, have you ever had somebody sneak up behind you? You know that feeling that you get behind, you know, the back of your neck, kind of hair stands up and stuff. Pay attention to that. So if you see someone who's, if you feel someone who's walking up on you or someone in your peripheral, you know, don't just look and hide away. No, turn and face them. Let's say you were walking this way or I'm like this, I see you and, you know, going about my business. I feel you walking up on me. Turn around and stop right there. Whoa, hold on. I'm not interested. Whatever the, whatever you feel like you need to say at that time, but you just let them know that you're not comfortable with them closing in into your personal space. Now, generally, there are three zones, right? There's the green zone, which is kind of like where we are right now. Green is I can't do anything but talk, right? This is more like yellow. One more step and I can get to you. Last one is red. That's when I can literally come up and touch you on your shoulder. You don't want anybody in your red zone, all right? So as long as someone is in your green zone, you can keep that stance and, you know, keep your cool and, uh, you know, deal with the situation however you feel it needs to be dealt with. When they get into your yellow, this is when you go into your stance. Depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed. If you're right-handed, you're going to put your left foot forward here, right? If you're left-handed, then you put your right foot forward. And the reason for this is because you want your power hand uh, on your back leg, right? Just in case. So when someone is in your yellow, if they're in your green, you're, you're good. It's okay to stand like even like this, like uh, our friend is standing. Um, but generally, you want to have your hands at least out and free. But when they're in your yellow, when they're in your yellow, that's when you definitely want to have your hands up and in your stance. You don't have to actually be up and ready to go, but at least have your stance because you never know what you may need to do from there. So you still try to de-escalate the situation. Hold on, you know, calm down. Uh, what are you doing? This person was a friend, so of course you would ex not expect them to come up and slap you. So let's say they make it up to your green, I mean your red zone, but you're still not comfortable. So that's when you put your hands up, right around the arm area. Don't touch them, but close enough to where you can feel. And when you feel, when, when you're right there, that's pretty much going to tell you what they're going to do next because it's going to be right around the bicep elbow area in the front, right? Don't touch them, just keep your hands there. If you feel movement, that's when you close the elbows to their body and you go into a grip. Now, this is the part where it would actually need to be a person. So we can talk about the details on uh, holding the grip and doing the takedown and so on. But that's gonna be the first part. Uh, for more information, check us out on Facebook and YouTube, or you can always set up an appointment to come train. All right, see you on the mats, us.